come to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rekah Kodash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, especially in these times. So, this video um, is inspired by a video I watched earlier today from uh, Amar One Gabor, priest Amar One Gabor, and he's part of the main camp. Uh, he did this video entitled, That Proud, I'm a Survivor Spirit. And of course, he's talking about <clears throat> the so-called black woman and her foolishness in believing in that you know, strong black woman slash feminist spirit. And uh, <clears throat> you see here a picture of a so-called black woman who was, uh, or who joined the army and now is <clears throat> complaining about it because she's afraid that she might be, uh, if the, if war should break out, between um, uh, America and Russia, because right now, <coughs> excuse me, there's a conflict going on between uh, Russia and the Ukraine, and that could escalate into world war. And we know, according to Bible prophecy, it is going to escalate into world war. Actually, World War Three. There's a prophecy in the book of Ezekiel where the Heavenly Father said he will be sanctified in Gog. Now, Gog, without going into a long explanation, and we've done videos on this before, Gog really represents Russia today, Gog. Gog, Magog. And um, the Heavenly Father said he's going to use Russia to come against America, which is known as Babylon the Great. All right. And um, Russia is going to make moves like right now. Russia is making a move on the Ukraine, which the Ukraine, truth be told, is part of Russia. And that is angering besides uh, causing fear. That is angering a lot of so-called Americans. All you got to do is watch the news and um, find out the opinions of so-called Americans on what's happening over there in the Ukraine as the Russian forces move in to totally take over. Now, according to Bible prophecy, Ezekiel 38, the days are coming when Russia will focus on Israel. Okay. That's in uh, somewhere in Ezekiel 38, somewhere around the eighth verse. You know what? Let me just get it. Okay. And then you'll see where I'm going with this. You'll see this is going to lead up to the draft being brought back. All right. Now, I have a clip from the video that um, Amawan Gabar put up. I have a clip from that video where one of the things being discussed in the, uh, you know, in the government, the American government, one of the things being discussed is... Uh, the possibility of bringing back the draft and drafting women into the army. Okay. Cause you have something called feminism. So you women that have bought into the ideology of feminism, which is the equality of the sexes. Well, guess what? Now you're going to be drafted and sent to the front lines to fight, fight, fight in these wars. OK, so let's get the prophecy in uh, Ezekiel about Russia. Very soon you will hear in the news Russia will set their sights on Israel. And this is pursuant to Ezekiel 38. And uh, some, yeah, right here, the eighth verse. Ezekiel 38 and eight, it says, after many days, thou shalt be visited in the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of, excuse me, against the mountains of Israel. So this is talking about the land of Israel here, which have always been waste. 
<clears throat> that's why you had you had something called the kibbutz all right that's when they actually brought in because that land is cursed the reason why the land of israel is cursed is because we're not there the true people of the lord the true israelites are not living in that land now pursuant to isaiah 14 and 1 the lord say he gonna bring back his people the true israelites back to their land let's get that now you got a few israelites over there but on the whole the 12 tribes of Israel is not in the land of Israel right now, as they're supposed to be, because that's our land. That's why when Yahushai comes back, one of the things he's going to do, besides destroying the society, is bringing back the true Israelites back to the land of Israel, beginning with the elect. Okay? A good example is the 144,000, 12,000 out of each tribe. Let's read the prophecy here, Isaiah 14 and 1, for, be, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and he's beginning to have mercy on us now by giving us this knowledge, this truth, showing us the future as it were. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And one of the reasons why Russia will engage in war with Israel, which will precipitate America to get involved, because America is uh, Israel's cash cow. Okay, America is propping up the land of Israel over there, propping up that lie that they're the real Jews. America is the, one of the main countries behind propping them up and that lie. Okay, as a matter of fact, America, last I read, America so far to the state of Israel, since it was created back in 1948, May 14th, 1948, to be exact. Since then, America has given Israel over $84 billion. All right, there's a, a, I forgot the name of the woman who actually wrote a book about that. And that's all of, all of, all of that money, or all of those monies, is to keep that lie going, that they're the chosen people, when in reality they're not. Now, you have Israelites over there. You even have Israelites that look like the so-called Jews. But on the whole, right, the, the 12 tribes of Israel are not, on the whole, living in the land of Israel. This is why we're reading this prophecy here. The Lord is going to, after World War III happens, and Russia is going to engage in war, in war with Israel, and ultimately engage in war with America, which I'm going to read that later, in Ezekiel 38, that war, World War III, with the missiles and all of that, that will set the stage to clean that land of Israel. So when we go back to the land of Israel, it's going to be a pristine land. It's going to be beautified once again. And the missiles, along with the chariots of the Lord, will help to do that, help to cleanse the land, purify the land. So we really don't want to go back to Israel right now. You, uh, you had... Um, you had this group HODC talking about going back, going back to um, Israel. They even went to Israel. Now ain't the time for that. Nah, man, Israel as we know it now got to be destroyed. That land got to be cleansed, okay? And the Lord is going to use Russia to do it. That's why in the prophecy the Lord said, "I shall be sanctified in you, O Gog." Sanctified means pure. Uh, sanctified means purified. So the Lord is going to use the so-called Russians and their army to bring war against Israel. And in doing that, that's going to clean the land. Okay, because they're going to fire the missiles on uh, Israel. And that fire is going to help to clean the land, cleanse the land. So that's an example of the prophecy where the Lord said, I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog. Okay. Okay, so. Isaiah 14 and 1, so after all this happens, we're going to go back to our land, the land of Israel. By this time, America will be 100% desert, by this time. Okay, it'll still be on fire. It's, it's going to be burning for a long time, America, all of it, all 5,000 square miles of it, going to be on fire. That's, by the way, you, you wacky tacky Christians, that's what's called the lake of fire, your beloved America on fire all of it all 50 states okay burning red hot okay that reminds me of what elder pastor uh said 
he said uh <laughs> he said one of his favorite topics is the lord have a sacrifice in basra the modern day basra is america man that's the sacrifice and you know when you have a sacrifice you put heaps of meat on the altar well guess who's going to be the meat all the people in america that are not part of the elect they're part of that sacrifice okay he really goes into it in, his, in the book of Ezekiel, the 24th chapter. He calls America the melting, basically that pot, the scum pot, also the melting pot. So the, the heavenly father, he going to prepare a great sacrifice in the melting pot. <laughs> he going to cook those people. Okay. Anyway, that's another video for another time. Isaiah 14 and 1 for... For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. What land? The land of Israel. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That's talking about the other tribes, the Israelite foreigners, when you go into it. Now, again, let's get back to Ezekiel 38. After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years. We're in that time now. Any, any day now, any time now, Russia will seek to go not only the ukraine look the spirit the lord got on vladimir putin is to be this conquering type of guy after he conquers you the ukraine and puts them in the right frame of mind that imperialist rush uh, mother russia that we know that we once know i should say it that way that we once know that's going to come back and that's the prophecy where the lord said he will put hooks into their jaws like uh, elder apostle ramlob did that video them hooks them hooks baby the lord is putting and the lord is using vladimir putin to be in that kind of spirit vladimir putin says he wants to br bring back mother russia the way russia used to be this imperialist power and we're seeing it we're seeing it in living color man we're seeing it in real time the fact that Russia has invaded the Ukraine. And it ain't going to stop there. Putin is in war mode, man. And the reason why Putin is in war mode is because that's the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai working on the mind of Putin. As it is written, the Heavenly Father mustereth the hosts of the battle. The Heavenly Father is the one that stir up these wars between nations, man. Always have and always will. Okay? So this is this is beautiful, man. Ezekiel 38 and 8. After many days thou shalt be visited in the, la in the latter years. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. That's the land of Israel. And is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel. Which have always been waste. Okay. And, and this ties in with uh, Isaiah 1 and 7. Because ever since our enemies took over our land, our land has been waste. Okay. It says in Isaiah 1 and 7, your country is desolate. Okay? That's why you had the kibbutz. What, what, what is the kibbutz? That's where they brought in trees and they brought in grass. Because that land is cursed. Why is that land cursed? Because we're not there. All 12 tribes of Israel, we're not there. Okay? When we go back to that land, it's going to be a paradise. The earth is going to be a paradise. Okay? Um, which, which have been always waste. But it is brought, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. That's the Russians, man. That's the Russian troops, led by, uh, well, led by Russia, along with the other countries, coming against Israel, because Israel is the big troublemaker right now. All right. You're going to have the so-called Russians. You're going to have the so-called Chinese, the so-called Persians, which is Iran today. They're all going to come against Israel. And that's going to precipitate America to get into the mix because America defends Israel. All right. Uh, Ezekiel 38 and 9. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands. What does that mean? Their, um, their armies. Their armies, okay? It's going to be a, like a cloud covering the land. Check that out. And all thy bands, that's the other countries that's going to fight with Mother Russia. 
You better believe China is going to be one of them. And the so-called Chinese, they have what, what you call a million-man army. So the Heavenly Father is setting up all the pieces right now on the chessboard, all right? And many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at that same time, or at the same time, now check this out, shall things come into thy mind. Yeah, the mind of the Russians, led by Vladimir Putin. I believe he's that guy. I believe he's that guy. And guess what? If he's not that guy, the Lord will raise up another so-called Russian to take his place. But I believe he's that guy. He has all the charm. He has all the characteristics of being that dude. Okay? <laughs> Vladimir Putin. And by the way, the word, the, the word or the name Vladimir means of, of great power, I believe it means. Of great power. If I'm wrong, uh, you brothers can uh, correct me in the, in the comment section. Okay? Thus saith the Lord God, it shall, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. Now here comes America. Here comes where Russia will seek to invade America. Because America, if Russia gets into it with Israel, automatically America is going to get into it with Russia. And those are the two stars, the two major stars of World War III. All right? Russia and America. Reminds me of that song by uh, Linton Kwesi Johnson. It was made back in what? Um, he was a reggae artist from, uh, from England. I think he came out of Brixton, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he was one of my favorite artists. He did, a, he did a song back in, what was it, 1984? The Eagle and the Bear. And it's talking about nuclear warfare, okay? The Eagle and the Bear. The Eagle is America, and the Bear is Russia, okay? And this is way back in 1984, all right? So let's read it. Ezekiel 38 and 11, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. Where is that? That's America. And I already explained the term unwalled villages in my previous videos. That's these states that are really supposed to have a fence around them, but they, but they don't. Like, case in point, I'm here in Connecticut right now. I can easily drive to New York, and I don't have to go through no fence. I don't have to go through no checkpoint unwalled villages that's the different states man right now i could drive from here to florida and not have to go through any barriers or any any of that man unwalled villages that's what it means thou shall say i will go up to the land of unwalled villages i will go to them that are at rest that dwell safely who's that talking about america man america's fun land they're at rest party 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 that's what america's all about but the bitter days are coming. Let's not forget the name America means bitter. So the bitterness is coming, brothers. And you few sisters that watch these videos, the bitterness is coming. Okay. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. There you go. I just explained that. To take a spoil and to take a prey and to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathereth out of the nations. America is known as what? The melting pot. You got all kind of nations over here, which have gotten cattle with goods that dwell in the midst of the land. That is talking about America, also known as Babylon the Great. So let's recap. Russia right now is, is, Russia is flexing their muscles right now. They're, they're uh, military muscles, right? Right now they're engaged with the Ukraine, right? Eventually it's going to go from the Ukraine. Eventually it's going to go to Israel. Russia's going to set their sights on Israel. The Israel that we know today. That's going to precipitate America to get into the mix. Then Russia is going to set their sights on America, conquering America. That's your World War III right there in a nutshell. And all the other minor nations, they're going to get mixed up. They're going to get involved. Okay? And ultimately, they're all going to shoot, according to Bible prophecy, and that's another video for another time, they're all going to shoot missiles on America and totally destroy this place. All right? That's how it's going down. And then in the midst of that, that's when Yahweh Shai is going to make 
his second debut, his second coming, as it were, that's when he's going to invade at, in the midst of that World War III going on between these different nations. That's when Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to invade the planet Earth in those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. And the nations, they're going to stop fighting each other and they're going to turn their attention to Yahweh Shai and the angels. Where is that prophecy found? In uh, Revelation 12 and 7. Let's read that. That's the future, man. Revelation 12 and 7, it says, And there was war in heaven. Now this prophecy, you can also find this prophecy in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, where it speaks about how art thou fallen from, from earth, O Lucifer. That's after the so-called white man is conquered by Yahweh Shai and the angels. He's going to be reduced to nothing but a peasant, a slave beginning with their top banking families. And what's kind of heavy is before Mayim shall Bauer change his name from Bauer to Rothschild, he was named just that, Bauer. Now, Bauer means peasant. So the top family of the planet Earth right now, the Rothschild family, they're going to be brought back to peasants. They're going to be brought back to slaves. Underneath us, Israelites, starting with the elect. They're going to be slaves of the elect of the nation of Israel, man. The Bauer family, who later changed their name to Rothschild, which means Red Child, Red Shield, okay, Rosh Shield. So starting with them, man. So this is beautiful, okay. Right now they own everything; they own the world, so to speak. But after Yahweh Shai and the angels get through with them, they ain't gonna own nothing. They're gonna be owned as slaves, and as pursuant to. The book of Psalms, the 149th chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Okay? This is what is meant by the last shall be first and the first shall be last. They're the first right now. They're going to be last. Okay? Anyway, Revelation 12 and 7. And, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels. See? Now, when you go in Daniel, the 12th chapter, the first verse, it tells you Michael is going to be coming back with the Lord. Michael, the archangel, the archangel of war. He's going to be right there with the Lord along with the other angels fighting against Esau and Esau's forces and the other nations and their forces. Okay. That's what we're reading about here. The war in heaven. Okay. Cause he, the, the Lord is going to be in those so-called UFOs, those chariots. And then you're going to have Esau and their forces and the other, the, the forces of the other nations. They're going to be up there in their jets, their fighter jets, you know, the, the different web, the aerial weapons that they have. And they're going to be fighting against Yahweh Shai and the angels. So that's going to be, <laughs> that's going to be one hell of a scene, man. Wow. Anyway, and, and, and uh, the Apostle John, he saw this. That's why it's recorded in Revelation 12. Okay. Another prophet that saw it was Daniel, the prophet Daniel. Okay. Also Isaiah. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon is talking about Esau and the other nations and their forces. You're going to have the Russians in there. You're going to have the so-called Americans in there. Because remember, they're going to be fighting each other. Right? And at the same time they're fighting each other, they're going to put all their differences aside and fight against uh, Yahweh Shai and the angels. Now remember what Ronald Reagan said, right? And you can, you can find this, all right? You can Google this where Ronald Reagan made a speech about, uh, uh, Star, it was a Star Wars speech about setting up a military in outer space. Roughly paraphrasing what Ronald Reagan said, which was a former president of the United States, he said, uh, what if we find out there's forces from another world, outer space, so to speak, uh, that are coming against us? Would we not put down all our differences and fight against those forces? So they know. They know that Yahweh Shai and the angels are coming to battle them. And one of the reasons they do know is because Yahweh Bashim Yahushai have put it in their minds to know. Plus, they got the prophets, the prophets out here. We're the prophets. We're bringing out the, these facts. We're bringing out this truth. And we've been doing it for what? Uh, since the, uh, uh, really since the uh, 60s, even beyond that. But heavy beginning in the late 60s, going into the 70s. Beginning with uh, uh, Rabbi Abba Bivens, who started started it off, you know, kicked it off. Then we had our elders, King Masha, uh, High Priest Arya, High Priest Yaquab, 
even back then you had uh, individuals which later they gave up the faith, they became apostates, but you had uh, Lahab, High Priest Lahab, that was his title back then, High Priest Yeshaya, High Priest Kazakh, and of course, uh, High Priest, which back then that was his title, High Priest Tahar, and then later he would be known as Elder Apostle Tahar, which is still doing, unlike Lahab and Yeshaya and those guys, um, Elder Apostle Tahar is still doing the work. And then right underneath Elder Apostle Tahar, you have men like myself, Elder Apostle Rakar, and uh, even uh, Elder, and I could say he's an apostle too, Elder Apostle uh, um, uh, Big Gad, Big Gad. He came in the truth before me. Okay, the word apostle just means sent away, and he's an elder, so there you go. All right, and you brothers, you should respect that man, all right? That, even though he's very humble, he's very low-key, that brother been in the faith for a long time. He's been in it longer than me, and he's he's gone through all kind of adversity. I'm talking about, um, <laughs> I'm talking about uh, Apostle Big Gad, Elder Apostle Big Gad, okay? If anything, I, I, I believe he deserves that title. The, the word apostle just means sent away. Okay? And he's an elder, definitely. Okay? All right, big gad. So, so there you go. So, you know, we've been pushing the work, man. We've been doing the work, all right? So the point is these top wicked elite be between our past elders and us, they know. They know the deal. And above all, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai works on their minds anyway. So Yahweh Bashim Yahshai have revealed to them, look, when my son, Yahweh said, look, when my son comes back with those angels, you are going to be fighting against my son. Okay? So this is what we're reading here. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And the dragon fought and his angels. Right? And prevail not. So again, oh, you can read about that in Second Ezra the thirteenth chapter. It speaks about that too. How Yahweh and the angels are gonna be battling Esau and the other nations and their forces. And they ain't gonna win. They're gonna like it says, hey, prevail not. How the hell are you gonna beat the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? <laughs> but they ain't gonna to want to fight, right? The scriptures say they're gonna be they're gonna be afraid to fight, but the Lord is gonna put the spirit on them to fight. And that goes back to the scripture, Proverbs, uh, what is that? Proverbs uh, 24 and 20, either 20 and 24 or 24 and 20. Usually I get them mixed up. To quote it, it says, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So the Lord is going to put, they're going to see all the power of Yahusha and the angels. And they're going to be afraid to fight because of that great power that Yahusha is coming with. Tells you Yahusha is coming with great power and glory. That's in Matthew 24. So they're going to be terrified, but yet the Lord is going to put the spirit on them to fight to fulfill prophecy, man. The prophecy that I'm reading here. One of the examples, Revelation 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven, meaning rulership. Esau will be kicked out of rulership and they're going to be reduced to slaves. That's their future, beginning with the top banking families, the Rothschild family, okay? So let's get back to the prophecy in Ezekiel. So this is what's going to pre precipitate with the Russians attacking Israel and then America. That's going to precipitate the draft that, that lately we've been hearing about. So the draft is coming back, okay? So, so you... Uh, so you, you uh, women, you so-called black women, strong black women, uh, you're going to get a chance to uh, prove that theory, to test that theory. We'll see how strong you are when you're drafted and you're sent into these wars, right along with the so-called black man. Okay? And again, that's according to Bible prophecy. All right? And I'm going to read to you the scripture before I end this video. But let's finish read Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38 and 12. So in the eighth verse, it speaks about Russia invading the land of Israel. And then when you jump down to the 11th verse, that evil thought 
that the Russians are going to have is to come against the land of America, to come against America. Because when, when they, you better believe when they invade Israel, that's going to precipitate America to get into the mix. America ain't going to stand for that. Okay. That's going to be like the final straw as it were. And they're going to go head up against Russia. And this is what we're patiently waiting for, man. We are patiently waiting for that. Ezekiel 38 and 12, to take a spoil and to take a prey and to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations and have gotten cattle and goods and that, or that dwell in the midst of the land. That is talking about America. So again, here's the future. Israel is going to invade the land of, uh, I'm sorry, Russia is going to invade the land of Israel. And then ultimately, they're going to invade the land of America. That's the future. And there ain't nothing can change it. Now, what I'm going to do is play that clip from Amawan Gabar's video. Okay, Amawan Gabar's video. As soon as I, uh, I set We're it up here. This. I'm going to play a clip from Amawan Gabar's video where uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what newsreel it is, what station, but the, uh, the, talk about how the draft has been in the news okay it's the draft is coming back into to uh uh it's, it's coming back into um operation so to speak so without further ado let's check it out and then they took me in some room and i woke up before congress would require young women for the first time to register for the draft just like young men abc's mary alice parks is on capitol hill this morning with the latest on this legislation good morning mary alice did you catch that at the bottom there it says historic change to the draft so you women you're going to be drafted too and a lot of you women you're going to run and get yourself pregnant so you won't have to go to the battlefield and fight all right, but a lot of you, a lot of you women, man, you're gonna be drafted since you wanna uh, play that feminist card, right? You wanna play that feminist card. You wanna be equal to men. So there you go. You got equality. So you shouldn't complain. All right. You even gonna hear in this in, in this newsreel, they ask the opinions of the women what they think about the draft, and some, I think, if not all of them, as far as I remember, they were like, yeah, well, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, they're saying that shit now. Because they ain't on the battlefield. They'll totally change their mind when they take these women and throw them on the battlefield. Give them a gun and then tell them, look, go and fight. You'll see them change their mind overnight. Okay? So the party's over, man. The freaking party is over. Okay? Fun land is over. Things are about to get very serious, very crucial in a short period of time. Like Elder Positar coined this year, this is the year of the turn up, man. The year of the turn up. Okay? And I ain't talking about no goddamn vegetable. I'm talking about things getting turned up. Okay? Good morning, Eva. Yeah, this is interesting and would be a first. Now, it's been nearly 50 years since the government has actually inducted someone into the military through the draft, but still, young men have to register after they turn 18. And now Congress is again talking about whether women should have to, too. Capitol Hill poised to make history. The Senate Armed Services Committee advancing a bill that, if signed into law, would require young women for the first time to register for the draft at 18, just like their dads and brothers. Ashlyn Cairoll, an ROTC student from Tulane, telling us she welcomes the news. It caught me off guard. I think that it... Yeah, she's saying that now she welcomes the news, but put on, put on a battlefield, man. Put on a battlefield. Where bombs are going off, people people's guts are getting blown apart, people's heads are getting blown apart, limbs are getting blown apart, right? Put on that kind of battlefield and tell her go and fight. Man, she'll, come on, man, you already know. Come on, do I have to really go there? Anyway, let's go. Definitely loves the playing field and it sets a precedent that shows that women are equal in the armed forces. Yeah, yeah, the bill okay. as written yeah, would Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> Increase parental leave for servicemen and women and establish a basic needs allowance, which advocates say could help fight hunger and food insecurity among members of the military. Today, women serve at nearly every level of the military. The last time the government actually said nearly every level. I don't think you got women. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you got women in the Marines. And I definitely don't think you got them in the Marines fighting on the on the front line. And again, I could be wrong, 
But she did say nearly every level of the military. I know women are definitely in the army. That stupid so-called black woman, she was in the army. And she's crying. Hey, that she's in the army. That's not even really the, the so-called first line of defense. I think the Marines are. And she's already crying. Oh, my God. They might have to put me on the battlefield. I might have to fight. I really didn't sign up for this. And when you, when you watch that video of the so-called black woman crying, you, you can't even feel sorry for her. You start laughing at her. Well, you bought that... You bought that line of feminism, huh? Also bought that garbage that the military tells you when you come into the military, they're going to take care of your bills. They're going to pay for your college and all that. I used to see those commercials years ago when I was a little boy, man. When I was going into a teenager, they was always playing those commercials. You know, be all that you can be in the army. Be all that you can be in the United States Army. Yeah, I'm not a good singer, all right? <laughs> but I remember that shit. And I almost went into the military. Almost. Almost. But Yahabashimi Ashai didn't suffer me to go into the military. My brother did. My brother went into the military. My elder brother. He was in the army, okay? Anyway, let's let's move on. Actually drafted a non-voluntary civilian into the armed service. Let me bring it back a little, okay? It caught me off guard. I think that it definitely levels the playing field and it sets a precedent that shows that women are equal in the armed forces. The bill as written would increase parental leave for service men and women and establish a basic needs allowance, which advocates say could help fight hunger and food insecurity among members of the military. Today, women serve at nearly every level of the military. The last time the government actually drafted a non-voluntary civilian into the armed services was back in 1973 during the Vietnam War. Last year, then-candidate Joe Biden saying a draft is not needed now, but that he would, quote, ensure that women are also eligible to register for the selective service system so that men and women are treated equally in the event of future conflicts. <laughs> On the National Mall, some worried faces, but many women and men conceding the idea felt fair. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Meanwhile, these women, look at them. They're chilling. You know, they're not on the battlefield. They're not fighting. So that's why they can easily say the BS that they're about to say. Oh, I think it's fair and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but look at them. They enjoying, the, they enjoying themselves. Now, if, if the circumstances were different, let's say they were on the battlefield fighting, the women, oh, this is terrible. This is, a, this is no place for a woman. Yeah, this is no place for a woman. <laughs> let's, let's move on, man. <laughs> we are living in the 21st century where there men and go. women are to be considered equal, then we have to be considered equal on all fronts. If it was uh, a drop. The woman that first spoke, can you imagine her on the battlefield, man? Come on, man. Come on, dog. <laughs> that included young men and young women that seems appropriate and fair i think that's fair i do i think i and women are being included in everything and i hopefully we don't end up in a situation where we hey this is this is why america's a joke man can you imagine her on the battlefield this place is gone man this place is a joke okay it's a joke and it's about to come to an end man these people these people these so-called american people they're they're so far from reality all right they're so out of touch and out of mind <laughs> this place is gone man like it says in isaiah 60 and 1 gross darkness to people america is a perfect example of that all right the most stupidest people on the planet earth they live right here in america you better believe it man the most unrealistic people of the planet earth live right here in america the most people that are out of touch of reality, out of touch with reality, live right here in America, man. Okay? That's why it's a blessing for us to have this truth, man. Like the scriptures say, we are light. We are a light shining in utter darkness, man. That's us. Because we got this knowledge. We got this truth. And we can see. All right? Amazing need the draft again but not everyone is on board with the idea of adding women to the draft republican senator josh hawley writing compelling women to fight our wars is wrong and then that shows you uh the scriptures tell you that the woman is the weaker vessel all right the woman have no business being on the front lines fighting any wars mm -hmm. fighting any wars 
But that, that is the reality, man. That is the reality. Let's end with the scripture here. Let's end with the scripture. Uh, Joel. I'm sorry. Yeah, Joel, the second chapter, the 20th verse. Joel, the second chapter, the 20th verse, which says this. Joel 2 and 20, but I will remove far off from you northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he have done great things. So what does that mean? The northern army represents the so-called American army, complete with that draft. So they're going to go over there to the Middle East to help fight in World War III. All right. The battle between Russia and America, that's going to take place in the Middle East. OK. But Russia will seek to come against America. But the major battle is going to take place over there in the Middle East, in the land called Saudi Arabia, which is basically a desert. So the, the key point is I will remove far off from you the northern army. That's America. And drive him into a land barren and desolate. That's over there in Saudi, Saudi Arabia, the desert over there. Okay? So part of that northern army will be the women because the women are going to be drafted into the army. And that's the, that's the prophecy, man. So on that note, I'll leave it there. Hopefully you were edified on to the next one.